What's your wizard level? Are you a grandmaster or are you going to be lord of the shire? Hold on, hold on. You know. I got a staff right here. Hold on. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> okay, but let's see if <laughs> you're reaping what you sow. You have sown generosity and positivity and just giving away tons of value. You're giving people the opportunity to be a blessing and to say thank you for what you've done. That's, whew, that, that, I got goosebumps there. That was good. Yo, 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 welcome back to the Creator Wizard Podcast. I'm here with my buddy Casey and we, we got another book launch update conversation. You know, we're we're here sitting in July, uh, time of recording, mid-July, and uh, figured it'd be good to come on here uh, and strategize. I think we're, we're starting to get some more solid, you know, solidity around the launch date, and my buddy Casey was like, okay, we should probably get some dates on the page, some milestones, this type of thing. So, Casey, hit me with it, man. What should, what should, we, what should we be planning at this point in the journey? Great question. I'm really excited for you. And, you know, as you've already been working on this book for a little more than a year and wanting to launch uh, in January of this coming year, you've got plenty of lead time. It's, you know, you okay. don't need to sweat. Uh, we'll get to and work out the specifics of what will happen during the pre-launch and launch phase. Um, what I predict may happen is, you know, I, as enthusiastic as, as you are all the time, just love your, your energy and your positivity. <laughs> I'm excited for this book to come out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and the goal right now is building momentum. I don't know if you've ever okay. seen, you know, the domino trick where each domino in succession is bigger and bigger and bigger yeah. till it's like knocking over a domino that's like as tall as right. a house. And it that's a that's a with... meme. That one's a meme, right? It's like what, right? I've seen that one where the guy is like, it's like, you know, I did this one thing and then it led to this crazy catastrophic <laughs> right. outcome or something. Right. <laughs> exactly. But if you had tried, you know, with all your might as a full grown person to try and push that last giant domino over, you wouldn't have been able to, but because mm. you hit that little one and it built momentum as it continued, okay. then when it gets to the launch, you're able to benefit from that momentum. And so I think okay. in the coming months, the focus should be that momentum. Now, as you're, as you're finishing the book, as it goes through edits, you know, um, your audience is on this journey with you to a degree. You've been pretty transparent in terms of, hey, like, here's, you know, here's the book. This is what I'm working on. You know, it's gone through the first round of edits. It's gone through the second round of edits, you know, getting feedback from your audience. We talked a little bit about that last time, how you're kind of writing in public a bit and creating this in public, similar to what ConvertKit is doing with their rebrand. They're rebranding in public. And what that allows your audience to do is it allows them to come with you on this journey. And so there's definitely an opportunity for you, I think, uh, to keep them, keep your audience clued in, whether you're dropping podcasts about it, whether you're you know doing little YouTube clips, or you're just dropping updates on Twitter, or you're even sending emails. You can, you know, as it's, as it's happening, it's great to talk about it organically. What I would caution you though, is not to open up pre-orders too early. I know I snuck in and like got the first copy <laughs> months ago, um, or pre-ordered months ago. I should say, I don't actually have a copy of the book yet. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> but you, you don't want to going back to that domino analogy as you're building that momentum. You don't want to introduce pre-orders too early. You want to have the condensed um, level of energy and momentum during that launch week. And so mm. as you're keeping, as you're dropping updates, that's where people can start like joining a wait list where you're mm. applying a special tag to them in ConvertKit, you know, inviting them along with the journey. Maybe, you know, there's a opportunity for them to get exclusive updates. So maybe, you know, maybe you drop a book update twice a month and people who are on the wait list get like an exclusive, be like, hey, I'm not sharing this little piece of information anywhere else because then it gives them a little bit of that insider inside scoop, you know, and maybe you send them a little video that's like a behind the scenes a bit of the process that you're that you're going through. And so I think those types of updates where it's like, hey, here's where we're at. Hey, you know, just got the final, you know, final edits back. Just got the cover design. Just got, you know, the first galley copy came in the mail. Those type of organic updates 
can bring your audience along with you on the journey and help build that momentum without without sharing that pre-order link because you want to save that for later. You want to you mm. leverage all that momentum on on launch week. Um, okay, so so okay, so question about that. Um, sure. So I have about 30, 30 people have given me money for the book as of Great. now. Um, so should I close that page? Like, or do you think that it would be wise to just like stop accepting pre-orders right now? I mean, I've, I'm done with the manuscript and it's in edits, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so you do think it would be wise to kind of like unwind that uh, at this point? I think it would be wise to turn that off for now and okay. treat the people who have pre-ordered as like your super VIPs. Like, okay. hey, like you've like these people have backed your book from the jump and maybe all you do is at the end of the acknowledgements in the back, you're like, hey, for everyone who pre like who snuck in and got this book months before it was ready, thank you. You know, mm -hmm. and just list mm -hmm. their names. That's okay. that's an option. Because I my name is in a couple of, of books in the acknowledgements and like no one nobody else knows besides me and the person who wrote the book that my name is there. Like it's not right. like in my resume, like, oh by the way, at the end of this book, the author <laughs> puts my name down. You know, um, but it means a lot to them, like to actually see right. your name in print in a book that you could buy off of okay. a shelf um, yeah. is huge. And so what I would do instead is, you know, you'll want to use the same URL and I would just have that is the wait that becomes the the waiting list. And that's where I would point as much traffic as possible where it's like, hey, but, you know, in the same way that a lot of you know, creators will drive traffic to their newsletter, you know, when like if they send a tweet and it takes off, they'll tag by, hey, by the way, if you like this, subscribe to my newsletter or, you know, they'll put it in the description of their YouTube video or their link in bio on Instagram. Understanding at the same time that you have other business initiatives that you're, you know, doing at the same time, yeah. and the book is just one of those things. The more you can have focused, ex focused attention for a period or for a season of time, the more it will go that way. I'm, so so let's actually talk about this because this is sure. a, a block that I have right now about this okay. because, you know, for the last like four years, basically like my CTA, I think we may have talked about this at one point, but just like my CTA has been like, join the newsletter every single time because my logic yep. has been like, I can tell you about anything that's going on in my ecosystem or my world if I have you on the newsletter. And so sure. I think one of my hesitations of like starting to be very loud just about the book pre-order page rather than just like generally join the newsletter um, mm -hmm. is that I'll be, um, I don't know. My, my, my logic on the surface is like, don't I want to tell all 35,000 of my people on my newsletter about sure. the book when it launches? Um, mm -hmm. And like, how do I balance update, updating my list generally with everyone on there with more frequent updates of people who have like opted in just to the book wait list? I guess I'm just sure. like trying to struggling to figure out like, how do I, is there value in like, there probably is value. I'm answering my question, but like there's, I, I guess, I don't know. I like, okay, maybe this is the question. The question is like, how often do I send updates? One, one thing I found is that throughout the process of writing the book, I was much more frequent about like social proof and dropping screenshots of the book on on the internet and all that stuff too. And like now mm -hmm. that the manuscript is done and it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind, I haven't really talked about the book in like a month and a half. And so um, I guess maybe that's what, what we should develop is like a timeline for publishing or promoting the wait list or I don't know. What mm -hmm. do you think? Uh, well, there's a lot to unpack there and yeah. those are a ton of great questions. And so what I would say is like the, the backdrop for this conversation or for, for addressing these questions is really you having a strong understanding of your flywheel. So yeah. like how does all of your different content fit together and then what is it pointing to? So you're on X and you're, you know, doing a bunch of stuff there and then you're driving traffic to your newsletter. Once they're on your newsletter, you should, if you don't have one, you should be sending them a welcome or a nurture sequence and then they start getting your newsletter. From there, you have the opportunity to promote your sponsors, to promote your additional content, to promote, um, you know, Creator Wizard and, you know, your different course and coaching options, you know, offers and things like that. And the book fits in there somewhere. So understanding you under having a very keen understanding and defining and actually like, you know, print it out, put it up on your wall, be like, all right, 
anytime you are going to do something, anytime you're going to send a newsletter, you're like, all right, you're delivering value, you know, within the newsletter itself. Like, hey, right. here, learn this thing, watch this mm -hmm. video, you know, listen to me ad lib about whatever. But then it's like, all right, what's their next step from there? It, eventually it will be, hey, go buy my book. You know, that will be something that you include in there. Can, can we actually, can we sure. I actually think this is a really good point to like dig into because I don't have the answer to this yet. Okay. And this is so, so right now the current, um, my, 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 my logic has been that like, okay, having the book will just be additive to everything that goes on to the coaching uh -huh. and the courses. And it's just going to be like a, it'll grow the TAM essentially sure. of like, you know, potential customers. Um, mm -hmm. and so the current, uh, nurturing process of like when someone joins the newsletter is like one of the very first things that I encourage people to do is take the free masterclass, which is about pitching and it's evergreen and you can pick a time and you can, you know, just like watch it on demand essentially. Right. And then I pitched my course, my, my brand deal wizard course, the on demand course as kind of like the first entry point into the business. As of a week ago, I launched a new asynchronous coaching offer, which eventually I think will become maybe the signature offer right now. Brand deal wizard is what I've been talking about for the last four years, but like it's really that ongoing coaching I think will ultimately become maybe one of our signature offers. And so, uh, or, or our primary offer. And so what do you think? What do, what do you think should be, um, should the book be the very first thing that I, that I pitch people? Should the math, the free masterclass be the very first thing that I, that I pitch people? Like what do, what do you, how do you think I should handle this? Like moving forward? Real quickly, remember your first podcast episode, your first YouTube video, your first blog post? Think back to how it felt to hit publish on that early piece of content. Now, look at how far you've come. Your content has transformed and so have you. But has your email marketing platform kept up? Do you even have one? Enter this episode's sponsor, ConvertKit, which is the email marketing service designed specifically for creators like you and for me because I use it and I love it. Whether you're crafting newsletters, managing subscriptions, or sending updates, ConvertKit grows with you. With easy integration for your blogs, your podcasts, your YouTube channels, and your e-commerce stores, ConvertKit ensures that your email marketing works as hard as you do. Look, I'm gonna be real with you. When you press publish on platforms like YouTube or TikTok, you're kind of at the mercy of the algorithm for your content reach, right? And to prove it to you, I'm actually going to pull up one of my recent Instagram reels. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to click the insights here. Okay. Look at this. I have 11,300 followers and this reel reached 301 accounts. So quick math, that is 2%, 2% reach. Contrast that with my average open rate in ConvertKit, which is between 40 and 45%. So which one do you want? 2%, 45%, 2%, 45%. Which one are you going to pick? So take control with ConvertKit. Here you can own your audience relationships directly. There's no middleman. There's no unpredictable algorithm changes, just a direct line to your followers. ConvertKit isn't just another tool. It's a partner in your creative journey. So if you're ready to create with freedom, automate with ease and engage your audience like never before, build a platform you own. Start with ConvertKit today at ConvertKit.com. That's ConvertKit.com. All right, let's get back to it. Um, that's a great question. What I want to back up a little bit to is, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things about, you know, these calls to action and, yeah, then, yeah. you know, and we talk about how you have a bunch of different offers. So like, what mm -hmm. do you promote where and when, yeah. um, you mentioned now, like when you were really actively working on the book and there was a lot of activity going on around the book, it felt a lot more natural and organic for you to share updates with your audience, whether that was happening through your newsletter or through YouTube or just on, you know, on Twitter, you're like, just finished typing the last chapter, you know, stuff like that. And that helps bring people along on the journey with you. What I would say is look at your, you know, you produce a lot of content um, and you have a very robust distribution system from what I can tell <laughs> as a observer on, you know, on Twitter. And so, um, what I would recommend is like, as you're looking at your like content calendar and looking at the categories of like, all right, you know, I post this many times a day on X, two of them are videos, three of them are text-based, the calls, to, you know, these are the calls to actions on each one. I would encourage you to start, you know, sprinkling the book in there and the other, uh, and sprinkling the wait list in there, whether, you know, whether you're sharing, you know, a pull quote from the book or, you know, just the, uh, a photo of, a, you know, chapter title with the first paragraph showing something like that, just start sprinkling that in and pointing to the wait list. 
The other thing about the wait list and the newsletter is it's a yes and not a either or because if they if you have somebody who is not on your email list sees your stuff is like ooh I want to make sure I hear about that book when it comes out and they join the wait list they go through a modified welcome sequence because they opted in for the book they opted in for the book they're going to go through a modified welcome sequence but then they end up on your newsletter list as well so like so so just because they join the wait list they will end up they will be on the newsletter they're just going through a custom or a modified welcome sequence at the same time you can continue i would definitely continue to promote your newsletter because when it gets to you know the launch phase you're you know you're not only promoting to the waitlist the waitlist just gets to hear about it first they get it you know they get the emails an hour or a day before they get access to you know um you know any type they get first access to like pre-order bonuses or what have you. They're like, they're your VIP list. They're your insiders. Now you also want to promote to the rest of your list, but they're not going to get the same level of exposure. And a disclaimer on all of this is in your emails, you want to have an opt out link that is obvious because what you don't want is your book promotion to cost you unsubscribes. That right. will happen, but you will minimize that impact being like, hey, don't want to hear about the book? Just click yeah. this link and you'll yeah. and you will only get the newsletter. Yeah. And there I've, you go. I've, and I've, I've done that in some course launches awesome. before Great. and it's it's definitely saved uh saved people. Question, do you do you think that I should just like it's okay, you can tell me. Do you think that I should because I'll do this. Do you just be like Justin, like only talk about the book or like 85, 90% of what you like being a loud mouth on the internet should be the book for like a year. Like if you say something like that to me, I would take that seriously and just be like, okay, like even though I haven't done that in the past, like, cause I, I, I've heard, I've heard the stats. I think you've shared me with them. I heard, you know, Matt from Lulu has shared this that like, you know, like author, a lot of authors just like stop talking about their book. And yes. I don't want, I don't want to be that casualty. And so like, if you told me like 50% of what I post on the internet, you know, for the next year should be about the book. Um, I would take that seriously. So like, you don't have to like tap dance around me, like just give it to me straight. Like if you, I'm okay, like not promoting the newsletter opt in like all the time. If you, if you think that like to really give this book, because again, going back to that whole like long tail effect, like I really do believe mm -hmm. it'll be additive to, mm -hmm. to the business overall. And so like promoting the book will, will still be have downstream positive yeah. impact, yeah. you know? I'm I'm not going to tell you to only promote the book for a year, but what I will what I will say is I, similar to the dominoes. Like as it gets closer to the launch, like within a matter of weeks of the launch, the book should take over the majority or a, at least a sizable chunk of your social content. Now you don't want to burn your audience out, but they've been along with you on this ride. You'll include other stuff in the mix as well. Cause if you, all you ever do is talk about the book and people will be like, all right, I heard you got a book out. But the thing is, I think what, where audiences get exhausted by, um, create by authors who come out with a book who only talk about their book is when they only talk about the book in the context of getting somebody to buy it. They're mm. not talking they're not just taking the principles i think the someone's the book yeah. right they're not taking the lessons and, and things like that and just sharing that and being like hey and then someone then is like i gotta get i gotta get this book i think mm. a great example someone i would encourage you to dive into is greg McEwen, who wrote the books um essentialism and effortless all he really talks about on twitter is concepts and lessons and takeaways and principles from his books and very rarely is he like hey go buy my book here's the link to go buy my book here's the link to go join my email list or whatever he's just he's sharing screenshots of pages he's sharing quote graphics that are designed in with similar branding and style as his book covers and he's talking about you know principles and takeaways and lessons and everything from the book and so I would I would encourage you to model the way you talk about the book going forward from from here and after the launch to how Greg McEwen does it because he's talking about his books but he's not talking about you buying his book. 
I just had a, I did this really spur, it's just spurred a, an idea. I should just like, uh, uh, ask someone on my team or hire someone to take my book manuscript and say, Hey, give me 1000 tweets from yeah. my manuscript. Yep. Um, with and screenshots, quote pull quotes, quote graphics, and mm -hmm. just like, give me a repository. And then, yep. I, cause I, I've done that with my YouTube scripts in the past sure, where I absolutely. said like, Hey, give me a bunch of tweets from like these 10 scripts or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe I should do a similar project like that. I would highly recommend that. The other benefit of that is you can start peppering in organically some of that content in your content calendar, like we talked about earlier. So let's say, you know, in a given week, you know, starting out 10% of, of your posts are related to your book. They're not all, Hey, join the wait list, you know, maybe a couple of those, but the rest of them are these lessons and these takeaways. And the other benefit is, is like the, you already talk about a lot of what is in the book. Like that's yeah. a largely, that's, you know, a lot of what you talk about on social and in your newsletter on YouTube and stuff. And so it's just been packaged in book format and mm -hmm. so you know if um and you do a really like to feel like you do a really good job with branding you're very consistent and so in you know um do you have your cover finalized yet it's not finalized no i have okay. the temporary like a one i hired someone on fiverr to make me a mock-up one and i'm like fairly happy with it but not it's okay. not final the branding of the like this first batch of whatever pull quotes and stuff you do can be in a style that matches your current branding for creator wizard. But then once the cover is locked, um, because what you want to have, ideally what you want to have happen is someone sees like a pull quote from, you know, that you've posted from your book and they're like, Oh, that's a sponsor magnet quote, you know, um, you know, that's such a great takeaway. I'm going to repost that. Or I'm like, I've seen 18 of these from Justin. I'm going to go buy the book. So I would, you know, leading up to the book launch, I would have the book take up more and more of your social, like pre-launch, like the week before and the week of the book can absolutely take over your social channels. Like that's, that's allowed. <laughs> and anyone like anyone has a problem with it is just jealous or has never come out with their own book and like, whatever, like you're going to get people who are like, dude, I get it. You came out with the book. But then, you know, but then going forward, the book should always be a certain percentage. It should be something that you're talking about because it's as as long as you're going to continue to talk about sponsorships and the creator economy, the book is relevant to yeah. what you're talking about. So as long as the book is relevant to the content that you're sharing, it should be in the mix yeah. um, at like indefinitely. Um, okay. And I do think Greg McEwen is someone good to like just check out his stuff. Now, he okay. he is purely an author these topics of essentialism and effortlessness are the only things he talks about so like he owns that niche he speaks on this stuff he does trainings on this stuff like that's his shtick and so i would not say you have to match his like volume and focus but just the way the way he crafts his content and the way he goes about it are a really great example super helpful um if we had to, I mean, if we're, if we're working backwards here and we've got, let's say about basically almost, almost six months, like, like to the, to the T, like we're about got six months. If we want to launch, like, let's say January 15th, if we, if we looked at the months, uh, you know, from here to then, um, what do, do you have like a, a rough timeline that you suggest or like themes of what I should focus on in each month leading up to that? Or like generally, what do you, what do you, how do you think I should handle planning if I'm working backwards? In terms of what to share and talk about with the book between now and the launch, the only thing that really changes is more the volume and frequency. And so, you know, in, in what you're, in what you're sharing and trying to build that momentum, you're, you know, sharing concepts and principles from the book. You're pointing people to the wait list. Um, you're, uh, you know, uh, sending out on like on your, you know, in your newsletter, you know, like the PS at the bottom is like, Hey, if you're not on the wait list, you know, for the book, make sure you opt in. I'm going to be doing, you know, there's going to be pre-order bonuses. There's going to be all this stuff. And like, it's just a little shameless plug for your book and every newsletter you send out. And in ConvertKit, what you can do is people who have, so one is you, 
if they're getting the newsletter, they're already on your email list. So all you need is a link trigger. And then when they click that, it'll apply a tag to them. And then using that tag, you can actually hide that post script, that PS on future emails. So like, for example, myself, I'm on your list. I've already pre-ordered the book, but I'm going to join the waitlist because I want to see, you know, all the stuff that comes through. So when you send a newsletter to me, that liquid code and convert it can hide that call to action because I'm already on right. the waitlist. Because what right. that helps is a vote, like, it makes it simpler for you because then you're not like, all right, I'm going to send version A of the newsletter to people who are on my list, but not on the wait list. And I'm going to send version B to everyone on the wait list. Like that just creates more work by just having the code. Yeah. You send one email. And if I'm on the list, I don't see it. If I'm not, I see the little shameless plug. Like, hey, and you could even call it, hey, shameless plug. <laughs> yeah, I actually, so I have a pretty in-depth implementation of this right now with a dynamic PS. So awesome. people, so people get different offers based on what they've mm -hmm. already purchased or sure. watched. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I do need to update that PS with, with the waitlist. It's a, it's a really good idea. Um, do you, do you think, um, so like promotion, like that's, uh, you're right. Like yep. those, these are obvious tactical things I should implement, uh -huh. promoting it more, getting people on the waitlist. Um, what other launch activities, like preparing for like a podcast tour or like mm -hmm. other other things that I, I want to be starting to think about now? Is it too early or what? I don't think it's too early, especially because a lot of creators, you know, um, I shouldn't, shouldn't say a lot. Some creators are very good about create, you know, about establishing a, a built out pipeline of content where they are booking interviews now for podcasts that are episodes that are going to come out months from now, or at the very least weeks from now. And so what I would have, what I would encourage you to focus on in the, you know, in the next three to four months in equal importance of ensuring that you're talking about the book in an organic fashion and it's sprinkled in as a percentage. So you're building that momentum publicly. You also need to build momentum behind the scenes. And that's where your partners and influencers come in. And so what I would start doing now is start working on your list. Like, I mean, and you, this is your opportunity to call in all the favors. Cause like we talked about earlier, this book is going to be additive to your business, to your platform. It's going to help like pry open that top of funnel quick call back to your question where you talked about what, you know, where should the book fit in eventually? I think the free masterclass in that welcome series is still a great lead magnet and an introductory offer. The book is also an entry point. So there's, you know, and you're thinking about that flywheel, there's so many different ways people could get into your ecosystem. Someone might see you tweet about your asynchronous coaching program and they just saw a couple of your videos on Twitter and they're just like, sold, this guy's great. They've never gotten an email from you before. They didn't read your book. And they're just like right in and then, you know, they continue on the flywheel and they start getting the newsletter and they, you know, then they hear about the book and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But in a, you know, in within what you can control, if you're sending in like a year from now, you're sending social traffic to your newsletter, they get the welcome series, they get the free masterclass. And then the next call to action is, hey, if you want to get, you know, we just talked about X, Y, Z in the masterclass. I go into so much more detail and talk about A, Z, A B, C, D, E, F, G in my book. Go check out my book. Um, mm -hmm. And so that leads to the book. So that's where so I maybe, put that in. So maybe it's maybe, so if I'm thinking aloud, um, my masterclass is focused on pitching, mm -hmm. uh, just on pitching. It's like a very in-depth thing. And then at the end, you know, for those that are uh, interested, like I invite people to join my full program, the Brand Deal Wizard. Um, mm -hmm. And so maybe for those that don't, Maybe the, the book, book is, is a down cell. Is a down cell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because I do the kind of the positioning of the, of the masterclass. It may, it makes sense. It's like okay, I just taught you about pitching, but I have seven other steps, <laughs> you know, right. uh, you know that to learn the sponsorship wheel, and that's what Brand Deal Wizard is. But for mm -hmm. those who I do talk a lot about, um, you know, uh, those principles in the book, and so maybe it's it's a natural uh, kind of down sell, I guess, to the, to, for people who don't join the course. So I guess that makes sense. I think that's brilliant actually, because then, because okay. you're, you're riding that momentum of delivering this master class. They want to, you know, if they've gone through it, they've gotten value. They want to learn more. It's a natural introduction. So it could be because they've already watched it. They've invested that time. They're already, you know, at that point kind of used to engaging and seeing you on video. And so introducing them to the, you know, right into the program, 
is kind of is currently and will be in the continue into the future a natural next step now for anyone who doesn't purchase that currently without the book downselling them to some other minor offer or to another free resource or to your podcast or some of your you know top performing content on youtube is one way to kind of downsell them while keeping them engaged um and i you know and warm them up to an eventual purchase in the future but once the book is out Having that book position, there's the down. So be like, hey, you know what? I know that X number of dollars is a significant investment, and we just met each other. So guess what? Here's, you know, here's a you know free plus shipping version of my book, it, which is something you could do, or or it's just like, hey, here's my book. It's on Amazon. Whatever the price is, here you go. One one thing that I don't I don't I'm not like asking you to be a genius and like figure figure this out for me, <laughs> but like I can't I I. I because this new, this asynchronous sponsorship coaching offer is so new, we've run a beta of it for about a year, but this group coaching aspect of it is brand new. It's like a week old, um, had a bunch of people join, which was awesome. But it's like, I could see one day that this becomes the main thing. And so I've, I've, I've tried to pull that thread and be like, okay, well, what do we, if, if we're trying to, you know, uh, like what gets, you know, measured gets managed type philosophy here. Um, like if we're trying to optimize for, um, the coaching program of like, uh, you know, enrollments in the coaching program, which let's be frank, like that, that's an ideal scenario. Cause that represents kind of more of a recurring predictable income stream for the business. Um, is the course, should the course be the first thing that I, that I, or should the masterclass be the first thing that I present? Maybe not because, um, cause, cause right now the way we have it is that, you know, we offer the, uh, brand deal wizard as an upsell after people join the coaching program, we say, hey, 73%, because this is the stat, 73% of people in the coaching program have also taken Brand Deal Wizard to kind of get a baseline foundation of sponsorship knowledge. Um, and so we, we positioned it pretty nicely, I think. But I've just thought, like, maybe maybe, maybe this isn't the right positioning moving forward now that we have the coaching offer. Maybe it makes more sense to, like, I don't know. I just haven't cracked that nut of, like, I don't, I'm not really quite sure how to position, especially now once the book comes out. I, maybe this is just like the flywheel work we need to do offline. Maybe I don't yeah. know. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> TLDR. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. I think you need to. Yeah. I think you need to figure that yeah. out. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's a mm. it's a great question, and it's a great it's an exciting problem to have because you're delivering a lot of value. People are in, you know engaging with it. They you know have the people have purchased it. They're in it. It's not like you're trying to solve the problem of I can't get anybody to join this new offer I have. Um, people are in it. You're just trying. You're which is which is awesome. Now you're trying to figure out, okay, like where does it fit? And so it sounds like, you know, you need a bunch of scratch paper or a blank whiteboard and some markers and post-it notes. And to really think about where does this asynchronous coaching program fit into the flywheel? Um, and I love what Nathan Berry has done in really championing this um, idea uh, and really digging into, you know, the flywheel framework because it's so much better than a funnel it's so much better than a ladder. Like the value ladder is helpful for a creator or, or anyone in business to help understand like, okay, where, like you don't have eight offers that are all the same price. You have eight, you know, you have, maybe you don't have eight, maybe you have five offers or maybe you have three, but they're tiered and at different price levels. And then you can offer stuff in between because a percentage of everyone who joins your list will watch the masterclass. A percentage of everyone who ma watches the masterclass will buy the book. A percentage of everyone who reads the book will buy your course, a percentage of like, so in terms of that, it's like, okay, where does the, the asynchronous coaching fit in? But then when it's a flywheel, everything feeds each other. It's socials connected to the newsletter, which is connected to book sales, which, you know, which is connected to the masterclass, which is connected to book sales, which is connected to the course, which is connected to coaching. And it's like, where do these fit in? And the, where it gets really fun is when you have this flywheel, and you've got many flywheels connected to it. And so if you, you know, you could think about maybe this coaching thing and, you know, services or, or mini offers or other things around it are connected. And it's a mini flywheel that's connected to your greater flywheel, you know, mm. or you've got, you know, because within the larger flywheel, you've got content offers, audience, community how do those all fit together and feed each other so that if you pull a lever on one, it grows everything else. Mm -hmm. um, and then like mm -hmm. seeing where the high points of traffic are, where are the high levels of engagement, where's, you know, 
how does revenue fit into all of those different points? Um, yeah, this is making me, this is a really good, um, um, it's funny. We, we, we started talking about a book and now it's like a business strategy. <laughs> and discussion. I do want to get back to your but question it, about what to do over the next three months. <laughs> no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So final thought on this before we get back to that, it's that once upon a time, this automation is not currently active, but once upon a time, you know, I have this like sponsorship wheel snapshot assessment that's free that anyone can take. You just go to creatorwizard.com slash snapshot. And it's like a seven to 10 minute survey where you can rate yourself at the, your competency at the, all the different steps of the wheel. And, and when you uh, take it, you get emailed a beautiful PDF with uh, a visual representation of your score. Basically, you get a cumulative score. And what we were doing once upon a time was we were based on the cumulative score, we were recommending different offers. So we said, okay, you scored a 40, which is like, you know, it's okay. Like you're just sending out this type of thing. And you, here's what we would recommend. You'd do these two things. Or if you're like above a certain threshold, hey, you're clearly competent, you know, it probably makes more sense for you to like go do the advanced ongoing coaching or something. And we have different kind of criteria there. And so maybe it's revisiting something like that where there's some sort of quiz or assessment. And, you know, because this is a question we get a lot, Casey, which is just like, what do I buy? <laughs> it's like, I don't. I don't know what to buy. I don't know the difference. And so this is one of our struggles is like mm. now that we're, I'm trying to be streamlined in terms of what we're offering and the ways in which we mm -hmm. can serve you. Um, and I think there's maybe just a bit of confusion about as we kind of navigate this transition. Yeah. Um, before we get back to the book, I want to zero in on that question. And this is a tip for creators of any kind, whether you're a podcaster or a YouTuber or you're, you know, just on Instagram or just on X um, or you just do newsletters or whatever, pay attention to the questions your audience asks you. Like every time someone emails you a question or hits you up on, you know, on a social platform or comments on your YouTube or whatever, just log those questions somewhere. There's automated ways to do that to where like if you like uh, on X, if you like if I hit the heart on a tweet, it it copies it and throws it in a spreadsheet automatically does that for me. And so pay attention to the questions your audience asks you because that is insightful data from your target audience on two things, the content you should create and the products and offers you should create. And so for you, if people keep asking you, what should I buy? They need something that answers that question for them. And maybe it's the assessment. Did you say it took like seven to 10 minutes to complete? Mm-hmm. I would challenge you. That seems like a long time. Mm -hmm. So I'd be curious, like, have you drilled into the metrics on like people who land on the assessment and versus actually complete it? Mm -mm. Um, you should, it should be fairly easy to do. You should be able to see yeah. like traffic to that page and then compare that to how many people have actually completed. Cause yeah. you, is it on like type form or something? So no, it's um on my snapshot. This is one slightly slight okay. wrinkle is that I have the, assessment is through another company. And so I don't have like, okay. I can't install scripts or landing page stats, or conversions, this type of thing. Um, okay. But you're you, well, point well taken. Like maybe there's a 30 second version of this, <laughs> you mm. know, um, where it's like answer these quick questions. And then it's like, you know, using right message or something. And it's like, here's the product we think is like perfect for you. It's just like a little widget on the site or something mm -hmm. like that, maybe. Yeah. And I don't think, and I think an assessment is great. An assessment is a great lead magnet. It's like what type of, you know, what type of, you know, uh, sponsored creator are yeah. you, or what yeah. type of sponsorship right. should you go after? Like what type, right. you know, what's your wizard level, you know, mm, like, yeah. you know, are you a grandmaster or are you going to be Lord <laughs> of the Shire? Like, you know, do you get a wood staff or, you know, a stone one? Like, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Know. I got a staff right here. Hold on. <laughs> of course you do. This is, I haven't, I don't use it very often, but let's see if, let, let's see if the, if it still lights up. I think it does. I'd lost batteries, but yeah, this was my, oh, this was my prop, uh, like for when I was filming some videos, I should bring it back. Don't you think? I love it. Oh, wait, Absolutely. So yeah. So I think, you know, a, a short, I would, I would encourage you to explore a shorter assessment because mm -hmm. I'm 98% sure your conversions will go up and the more people okay. who complete it the more people you're able to say, hey, here's what you should buy. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that good. would be great. So going back to your question about like, okay, what do I do over the next six months? I think over the next three to four months, your primary focus behind the scenes, because because publicly 
you're going to start making sure that the book is sprinkled in on a regular rotation and over time has an increased presence. You're going to share pull quotes and things like that, you know, screenshots of the page, things of that nature. Um, but behind the scenes would really be focused on partner and influencer relationships. And I know that you have had an agency in the past, you know, um, where you did a lot of influencer marketing. This is your opportunity to call in your favors, to be like, hey, Jay, Klaus, you know, we're, we're homies. You know, uh, I got my book coming out. Are you, you know, are you game to promote the book? And there's a couple different types of asks that you can make. Um, you can ask to uh, have the, there's a like four tiers of asks, if you will. One is asking them to talk about your book to their audience. So, you know, we'll use Jay Klaus as an example. He's sending an email to his list. He's talking about it on his social media. He, you know, uh, he's mentioning it, you know, on a pod, you know, when he's doing a podcast, you're not a guest at yet, but like him just talking about your book on his podcast to his audience, that's kind of the tier one ask. The tier two ask is, I've got like, I wrote these down, is when you're getting access, you are getting access to their fan base. You're a guest on the podcast. You're like, you take over their newsletter, you know, for a day or a week, um, you know, and you've like provided copy, be like, Hey, you know, um, you know, Hey creators, this is, you know, this is Justin, you know, I'm here to talk to you about sponsorships or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so guess podcasts, guess emails, you know, if people have blocks still, you know, like, uh, an article on their website. Um, so you're, so in the first one, the, the partner is talking to their audience about you. The second tier is you are talking to their audience, like you're borrowing their audience. Um, and then the last one, uh, the third one is social shares. So in this situation, it's just like, hey, like I can't have you on the podcast, you know, I'm, I'm booked out or, you know, um, I, you know, I'm not going to send a dedicated newsletter about, about your book. It just doesn't fit into our content plan, um, you know, but I'll, you know, I'll tweet about it. I'll, you know, I'll post something on Instagram. And in those situations you have, you know, depending on the level of the partner, you can have a generic swipe file where it's just like Google drive or something on Evernote or a hidden page on your website where they can just copy paste where, you know, they copy paste a graphic, they copy, you know, you, you know, have a bunch of tweet options. This could be something else that you hire out and have someone help you build those assets for. Where it's like, hey, I need, you know, I need 30 tweets to, you know, or third or or 15 LinkedIn posts related to recommending my book as if I was somebody else. And so you could have a, you know, a generic or multi-purpose swipe file. And then for certain influence, certain partners, you could create custom swipe files for them. So let's say, you know, J Klaus, you know, it's just top of mind, I guess. So like you could have a you know a site or a folder that's just for him be like hey man here's you know here's what i need you to you know here's your stuff here's you know two sample emails you could send that we've written in your voice based on you know subscribing to your newsletter here's you know we've looked at you know we've we've written five or 10 tweets again in his voice you know cuz you could use you could have a someone on your team use ai to like pull in the last 100 tweets that Jay sent to get his voice a little bit and then be like, Hey, promote this book. I need 10 LinkedIn things. And then the person on your team is obviously cleaning those up. Um, cause they're not going to get it. I mean, you, you could go down the rabbit hole and be like, I've created a Jay Klaus, you know, AI tweeting machine. And I'll, like, he'll just tweet as Jay Klaus all the time. Hey Jay, can like, I sell you this? <laughs> yeah, sure. Exactly. Um, you know, uh, and so, <laughs> I'm, if, if we want to explore alternative offers and services, <laughs> that's a whole other podcast. It's called a cross sell, um, bro. Come on. No, yeah, it's kidding. all a cross sell. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So then, you know, and then the last one is just like um, the kind of the last ask you can make is just a blurb. So like someone, let's say, and this is more for people who have credibility in the space, but they may not really have a platform where it's worth it for them to be talking about your book or mm. they're just like, like, I'm not on Facebook or they're like, I'm not on X anymore or whatever. But 
having a blurb from them would be valuable to you to include on your site, like on your landing page or like something you could share where it's like, hey, this is what Jay said about my book. And then you you are sharing that graphic with your audience, but you're borrowing the credibility of Jay because he's an established presence in the space. Got it. Um, okay. And so the the way this is, <laughs> it's not very sexy, but spreadsheets and databases. And so, you know, you start creating a really long list of like, okay, these are all the people I want to pursue as partners and like make that list as long as possible. And then you, uh, you've got columns for, you know, for, you know, <laughs> email address, Twitter handles, estimated audience size based on like their social media following. If you happen to know their email list size, and then you start doing out, like, it's just like cold calling almost where you're just tracking. It's like, all right, first reach out to Jay on, you know, July 16th, followed up on July 23rd, you know, or, or whatever that appropriate cadence, you know, cadence is. And then you're like tracking their responses. Are they in or out? And then people who are out, they just get filtered off of the list. Um, you still have them there. So you don't reach out to them accidentally a second time. They'd be like, dude, I told you no three months ago. Um, you know, uh, and then it's like, okay, what are they in for? Oh, they're in for a podcast. Great. When is that podcast dropping? You know, or or when is that interview scheduled? When do I need for them to have it drop? You know, the week of January 15th um, or the week before, uh, you know, what's their address? Did I send them a book? You know, um, and you're just tracking those data points and then you're <laughs> just following up on all, like these are leads you're a salesperson for your book and these are leads for your book. Um, and it's your opportunity to, you know, um, kind of call in, call in favors, be like, Hey man, I think the other thing in reaching out, you're very, you know, approachable and charismatic and like super nice. If you ask me like, Hey, Casey, did you promote, promote my book? I'd be like, sure. Um, you know? And so I feel like you don't need this warning, um, or this caveat, but somebody listening to this might be nice. And don't like pressure people. Be like, hey, yeah. man, I got a book coming out. I'm really excited about it. Here's the value. I believe it's going to deliver to the audience. Here's why I think it would be a good fit for, you know, for your audience or why I would vow, you know, why it's important to me to ask you to promote this book. Um, you know, are you, you know, could you, you know, could I be a guest and make a specific ask? Could I be a guest on your podcast? Could you share about this on social or whatever? You know, if not, no pressure, still a big fan or, yeah. you know, something like that where it's like you don't want them to feel obligated or guilty um, because you want them to be excited about your book. Like you want them to talk about your book, but you want them to be genuinely excited about it. And if they're going to be um, – if they're going to be unresponsive, if they're not, if they're going to say yes because they feel obligated or guilted into it, that energy will come through in the way they talk about your book, you know. And uh, hmm. yeah, is and you don't, is you um, this is super useful. It, 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 so one thing that's like a block maybe for me is that sure. um. I always have the tendency to want to reciprocate when I'm asking for something or say like, well, if you do this, I'll do this, like kind of quid pro quo. So I'm not just like mm -hmm. asking something and not asking something of someone without offering something in return. Mm -hmm. But like I maybe the answer, maybe I've answered this for myself, is that like I've spent the last four years offering to do lots of things for people without yep. any expectation of things in return. And so maybe I just like make mm -hmm. the ask and don't say like, here's what I'm going to do in exchange for that. It's just yep. like, is that right? Yes, that is how I would approach it because you're somebody who has sown like you're reaping what you sow. Like you have sown generosity and value and positivity um and just giving away tons of value. But also like you also have offers. People can give you money if they really want to. Um but you've given away a ton for years and like this is giving like you are blessing people like don't rob people of a blessing you're giving people the opportunity to be a blessing and to like, to say thank you for what you've done by talking about your book. Like I do. That's I, oof, that, that I got goosebumps there. That was good. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it in that way. Yeah. Hmm. And, and if they like, Hey, yeah, like, of course I'll promote your book. Can you, you know, I've got a book coming out the next year or, mm -hmm. you know, you should come on my podcast or whatever. Um, I would also caution you like when they, when they say yes. And, um, 
you should not feel obligated to say yes to everyone who makes that ask mm. because what the filter I would use for you is if they had, if you hadn't asked them for something and they had just reached out to you cold and been like, Hey, Justin, come on my show or Hey, Justin, can you promote my book? And you would have said, mm, then you should say no. Be like, Oh, mm. you know, thanks so much. But that like, there's, there's very nice ways to say no. All that doesn't fit into my content plan or I'm not doing, you know, guest appearances that don't have anything to do with the book. Mm. Um, you know, uh, there's really nice ways to say no. You can Google it. You can have Chat GPT crank out. I need a whole to, yeah. Like, I might need to. Um, I might need to like it. Like uh, <laughs> huddle with huddle with you on that because that's one challenge I have. Is like, hey, will you promote me a book? And they're like, sure, come on my podcast. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. Uh, it's yeah. been like the season of no for me for the last couple of months because of this. You know, because mm -hmm. I'm just so overwhelmed with everything. So that's very good. Okay, final thing before we wrap up because I know we're getting a little long. Um, I've heard. I think it was Tim Grawl or maybe. Uh, I heard James Clear or Tim Ferriss or someone talk about that, like, just get or no, it was uh, it was it was Rob Fitzpatrick. It was like, get a thousand of these I'm, books. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing because you're setting me up to agree with whatever you say, because whatever Tim Grawl, Tim Ferriss or James Clear said anything about books, just go do that. Yeah. <laughs> Be like, yeah, I know yeah, more that, than, I was, you know. I was covering all my bases <laughs> the, there. The like, best uh, book marketer yeah. I've ever known. One of the best, you know, news, New York Times most prolific, you know, <laughs> life improvement folks. Uh, and then uh, someone whose oh, book is God. still on the New York Times bestseller, <laughs> like six years later, has sold 200 billion copies. Like, come on, man. What a what a okay. what, a, what an intro, <laughs> dude. OK, so so here's the real question, which is I've just heard that, like, get your book in a thousand people's hands. So, like, how does that factor play into this is just like trying to send out as many. Maybe I don't even make an ask. I just be like, hey, give me your mailing address. I would love for you to like read this book or check it out. I think it'll really help you and like go after some like influencers who may not even be uh, you may, might be like a, a lifestyle influencer who has like 200,000 followers or something who's like I helped in a course one time or like is that should that be part of the calculus of like, uh, you know, get, just getting this book out there with as many people as possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. I was talking with Tim about this um, at Craft and Commerce in Boise because he just came he uh, had galley copies of his new book that comes out in September. And he was talking about like, just like you, obscurity is your enemy. Don't worry. You know, some creators fall into the trap of thinking like someone's going to steal my idea. They're like, your idea isn't original. Like that might offend some people that might bother some people, but it's not, it's not. I am personally working on a fitness newsletter for dads. Do you know how many people create content in the fitness space? Do you know how big the <laughs> fitness industry is? It's hundreds of billions of dollars. Like it's obscene. I am a my I am a I'm not even a fish. I'm a krill uh, in <laughs> in the ocean of fitness content. But you know what? I don't care. Like I recognize that, and I'm doing my best and showing up. And so my the the enemy of any creator is obscurity, not piracy. And so when it comes to the book, especially for someone who is, you know, a new, a new author or someone who's coming out with a new book, you want to get your book in as many hands as possible because then it spreads like you're, you know, <laughs> like a virus, but a good way, <laughs> you know, um, because you, because right. ideas are contagious, you know, to use mm. a, like an inception um, reference. And the more people who read you, read your book, the more people um, will share and talk about it. And also in thinking about where your book fits into your flywheel and into your value ladder, the more people who read your book, the more people are going to buy your course, the more people are going to buy your coaching. And so depending on how the math shakes out, it might be to your benefit to have a loss, have a revenue loss on the book in the short term in order to have that long term, long tail gain. And so I would, you know, very much encourage, like, I would encourage you, like, go on as many podcasts as possible. You know, um, you know, if it's the type of show that you wouldn't go on normally, be like, eh, that's, that's fine. Like, you've got to have your own boundaries. But like James Clear with his book launch, 
Um, I want to say he talked about you might look you might look up the Tim Ferriss episode where he I and did. James talk. Now, okay, I great. did. It was so good. It was so good. And that's exactly what he said. He just like yep. went on a zillion yeah. podcasts and it was like his goal. Mm -hmm. Well, and he zeroed in on the CrossFit niche first. Like mm -hmm, that's where he right. started all of his stuff. And then it kind of spread organically, you know, from there. And so for you, like I would go on as many shows as possible. I would give away as many books as possible. Now, I wouldn't just say to the internet, hey, fill out your email and address here and I'll send you a free copy of the book. That's, that's kind of the like, that's the far, that's the extreme end of the spectrum. And like, right. okay, Alex Hormozzi, like calm down. Because right, um, right. he still <laughs> sold his book. Like he gives his right. course away for free, but he sells his book. Yeah, for, for these partners and stuff, maybe the like lead is like, hey, I've got a new book coming out. I want to send you a free copy. Also, you know, uh, could I be on your show? Or could you send a newsletter? Or could you send a tweet or whatever? Um, and fit the ask to the person, um, you know, and maybe this is something that someone on your team could do a little bit of research on. So like as you're building out that list of all the, you know, 100, 200, 1,000 people, how, whatever, however long the list is, I would say the longer the better. And just like sit there and just like brain dump or like dictate into a voice recorder and have someone else create the list for you. But then, you know, have that, you could have someone else match like, okay, based on, you know, who this person is, you know, if, are they an author? Yes or no. Um, how, you know, do they have an email list? Yes or no. How many, you know, what's their total social media following? How many YouTube subscribers do they have? Because then that will then help you tailor your asks because maybe somebody doesn't have an email list. So you're not going to you know reach out and be like, Hey, Casey, can I, you know, can you send a newsletter on my behalf? And be like, I don't have one. I just have right. a YouTube channel, you know, <laughs> right. be like, Oh, sorry. I mean, going to be on your YouTube channel, you know, right, or whatever. Right. Um, I think another thing to look at is, you know, you want to get like, get all the quote unquote free or no cost asks first, but then also explore paid options. You know, you mm. could do, you could do, you know, paid ad traffic to the wait list because then like the costs of that, um, that traffic is just an opt-in. You're not actually paying for a purchase because you're going to drive the traffic to the purchase afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with uh, the ConvertKit sponsor network, you know, um, offer, you know, get, try and get paid recommendations on other people's newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, you know, particularly folks who are in the creator space like you, um, you know, and so go for the free stuff first. Like, yeah. let's take Jay as an example. Like Jay will probably have you on a show for free um, and might, you know, send a dedicated email for your book. Um, and you could also purchase an ad spot. Maybe you could purchase a sponsor spot in his newsletter or on his podcast, mm -hmm. you know, as well. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, other layers of things to add in the mix. Yeah, man, I've got my work cut out for me, man. This was so useful uh thank you and uh, i always i always very much look forward to our conversations and kind of behind the scenes of how this uh, book launch is coming together if you guys want to uh follow casey or work with him make sure to check the links uh below um and thank you dude this is i'm feeling like i could run through a brick wall right now awesome awesome yeah. i love it thanks dude <laughs>